Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode I hope to get the Deerheart probe over to Deimos. We have to get into a particular orbit to satisfy a satellite contract and uh, uh, it says Gilly but actually it's Deimos around Mars, the moon of Mars, and then we have to land on Gilly. So we've got two contracts to satisfy here. Um, I wonder why it doesn't read the mystery goo unit on this. It says, have a mystery goo unit on the satellite. Well, there is one. I hope that counts. Anyway, but, uh, yep, so that is my plan. And I hope to get done with it. I, I think uh, there's sufficient time to get done with it in this episode. So there we have it. I've already plotted the transfer to Mars. And I've done it with unusual accuracy. And that's, of course, completely futile because there's no way I can hit a transfer with an accuracy of a hundredth of a meter per second on the prograde normal and radial numbers but uh, as you can see I've got plotted so that I've got 58 kilometer periapsis around Mars and that is with a mid-course plane change of uh, 960 meters per second or thereabouts but yeah I'm probably gonna have to do further adjustment on this it's not gonna work out quite like this but in any case, I'll try my best, and uh, we'll take this as seriously as possible. Uh, the electric charge situation is the big worry, but I did lock the battery on the probe, so so if things go wrong, we will still proceed with that battery. Okay, and uh, also, uh, the probe's own cores should go into low power mode while we are on our way to Mars. While we're time warping all together, they go into low power mode, so that'll help as well. Okay, so anyway, let me uh, get to the maneuver node, and this might take two rounds to burn, and that'll of course introduce more inaccuracies into the burn, but uh, yep, we'll see how it goes. Okay, we're getting close to the burn point here. I'm going to activate RCS to turn. And we're going to use the Ullage rockets in order to settle the fuel down, even though I don't have engine igniter in. And we'll use the sets of Ullage rockets first. And then by the time uh, we've done two relights, the whole system should probably be fairly light, and so the RCS should realistically be able to help with any further relights we might need from the RL-10. Now, I've uh, uninstalled uh, ambient light adjustment temporarily uh, in order to see if that helps Planet Shine, but it doesn't remove my one irritation with Planet, my, my one large irritation with Planet Shine is that uh, these settings reset every time. And so that's inconvenient because, frankly, this install of Realism Overhaul likes to quit on me uh, in the middle of recording the video. And so, given that, I like the settings to remain there, and ambient light adjustment keeps the settings, whereas Planet Shine seems to reset to its default every time I restart. But we'll see how it goes. Okay, so, all those rockets. Oh boy. I always hate when they don't uh, stage properly, but here we go. I'll have Smart ASS hold us to the node. Even though it might. Uh, I'll engage fine controls to avoid using too much of the fuel here. But here we go! Uh, first trans-Mars injection burn. Okay, I think it's about time to go around for the second burn, so engine shutdown. And here we go. Now, some of you might be wondering, and I'm wondering as well, whether we're going to have enough of the liquid hydrogen left over to do a nearly 1,000 meter per second burn at our mid-course plane change. I don't know. And so that's that's a concern. But I think based on, uh, for instance, my uh, Mars DRM video, the missions I did there, that a substantial amount of liquid hydrogen remains in the cryogenic tank even uh, after we uh, do our thing. Okay, that didn't work right. Yep, I'm gonna have to replot. Anyway, um, so yep, I'm counting on that and hoping for that. Though uh, we could use the the addition of the Aegina stage to do the burn if absolutely necessary. 
Uh, I, in that case, I would be hoping that our transfer to Deimos wouldn't take too much juice. Okay, well, good news and bad news. Good news, uh, I've really optimized our trajectory quite nicely, and you can see we're coming in very close to the orbits of Phobos and Deimos, so that would be ideal. Um, the downside is that our mid-course plane change is now costing a little bit more than before, and of course this is all very touchy. Again, I've, I've done it to the hundredth meter per second, so uh, it's going to be tough to actually hit this. But um, anyway, uh, we've got that going for us. It looks like our maneuver node is in a totally different location. That's unexpected. Or maybe we've been drifting a bit. Um, yeah, weird. We should have been lined up with it already, but okay. Um, let me take smart. Well, uh, smart ASS must have been. Uh, oh, smart ASS must have been turning us towards the maneuver node even before I had it all worked out. So that must have been the problem. Uh, well, it didn't use much fuel to do it. Okay, here we go with the second relight. So, all its rockets activate. And throttle. Oh ho, we have a little bit of a kink in our plan. Unfortunately, uh, we lost connection in the middle of this burn. I guess I should have programmed remote tech to do it instead of doing it manually. Okay, well I'm going to set my throttle down. And I guess we're going to have to go around one more time. Okay, replotted, and uh, I'm I'm quite serious. I've once again plotted it as closely as possible. Uh, one one point four kilometers uh, is probably too close, but uh, we'll take it for now. And again, looking for a trajectory that's in line with those uh, orbits of the moons of Mars. And yep, uh, Mikos plane chain is about the same as last time. So here we go around again. Okay, here we go, prep for a third burn. I'm going to take fine controls off so that I can apply a full measure of RCS thrust to sell the fuel. And I'm going to assume that's good enough. Let's go. We are still pretty good on the RCS. I hope it's not taking any from the upper tanks. Sort of surprising that we're we're this good on the RCS fuel, but then again, on the moon trip, it was also pretty good. Uh, yeah, that's locked. Hmm. Okay, here we go. Last little bit of this burn, and sorry, it's all in the dark, of course, but uh, the timing is the timing. I'll just go by this, and then we'll see what's really going on. We'll use the RCS to adjust. Okay. Let's hold it there. Well, oh, I'll let it drift for a sec here. Or Okay, it's one of those situations where it sort of depends which way we're wiggling, but um, let's go with this. It looks like a 9.4 meter per second burn. I wonder if the RCS system can handle that or whether this is asking too much of so little RCS fuel. I'd hate to have to use a relight on such a short burn, especially since it'll be hard to hit it with it anyway. Well, that should leave us with enough fuel for the mid-course plane change relight. But not much else. It's a totally different approach to uh, Mars here with that, so let me once again re well, let me get out into interplanetary space and then replot. Okay. Let's get our probe dear heart into the sunlight finally. And let's make sure its tail is facing the sun so that it gets maximum exposure for those panels. Okay, okay. I'm gonna take this. It's relatively in the right position. Let's proceed. out to interplanetary space. Wish I could reliably turn off the one of the Agena cores. 
because we don't need both of them. We're under 12 tons. But I'm worried that I'm going to lose control if I do. But that would save us quite a lot of our drain. Okay, so here we go again. Once again, a nice, relatively precise approach to Mars plotted. Once again, in line with the moons of Mars. Don't have too much fuel. I'm just going to leave it be. I'm not going to turn it yet. Um, though our power generation is... Why is it spinning out of control in the first place? That's what I'm wondering. Okay, well, um, guess I'll have to turn it. Okay, I guess I'll call that good enough. It's a little bit of fuel there. Let's not use more than we need. All right, out to make course plane change now. Wait, it's it's drawing electric charge quicker than this would indicate. That's not fair. What isn't being counted? Uh, okay, well, we're approaching the mid-course plane change and our electric charge is dropping precipitously. Let's look at the situation. I might have to send this into hibernation mode if it can't handle itself, but I think it's just our orientation. Might have to pump some fuel down for this stage. Not something I want to do, but might be something I have to do. <laughs> okay, I think I'll call this spin stabilized at this point. Interesting, the fairings are a little bit off here. I wonder why. I could dump the fairings and just use the RCS from this stage. That'll be more realistic. Anyway, I think I can leave it here for three days. But it still shows a power draw here. And it is spinning off now. Yeah, let me jettison the one of these fairings. Uh oh. It's gonna take 74 seconds. Okay, well, let me time warp through it, sorry. Okie dokie. Let me extend this solar panel. I guess I'll unlock this tank. And that'll help with our orientation issues. That's a nice big solar panel too. It's supersized using tweak scale. Well, we're out of fuel down there. This is not a great way to handle this. That's good enough. Every time I come out of warp, it starts rotating. That's very annoying. Okay, anyway, let's get to the mid-course plane change. I've had enough of this. Oh, it might be rotating because of the panel. I mean, I guess that makes sense. I mean, uh, the fact that we uh, jettisoned that fairing and extended that panel. I think we're a little bit late here. Uh, no, I, I want I want node. Can we get to the node? somebody any computer system shouldn't trust the computers for this the panels are really looking bad hold on I'll take it it's tough for me to turn it these the the, the RCS ports up there aren't meant for this they're much lower powered I think something's wrong. Hold on. I'm sorry about using the time order to stop spinning, but... Yeah, there's something wrong. It's starting to spin immediately. Uh, let us let me jettison... Uh, let me jettison the opposite panel. See if that helps. Or uh, did I already uh, tell it to jettison that? Okay, yeah. Let, let's just see what happens after a minute. I'm gonna jettison this too. We just need, uh, remember, we need at least one to keep the connection, otherwise this stage is going to go off. We have enough fuel in this stage, but I don't know if I can relight it, it's actually this portion. 
Yeah, I don't know if we're gonna get to relight it. Okay, this I, I think it was those fairings that were glitchy, maybe. Maybe, but we're still rotating quite a lot. Yeah, I think it was the fairings there that were causing a glitch somehow. So, yeah. Uh, we're a little bit late now, but uh, here I'm going to apply RCS thrust to settle the fuel to the tune of about uh, one meter per second. All right, and then ignite. It's tough to get to the maneuver node right now. Gotta have smart ASS handle it. Well, we've lost some fuel in this stage. But it's not the most critical stage anyway. Let me get solar panels out. And I'll take 75 seconds or so. With half of its stuff deployed, there's an odd looking ship so far. But still functional. And once we drop this uh, RL-10 stage, we will lose this core. And that will be a good thing. That will save us some battery power. Though I want to shift the electric charge up. It's drained from that one. That I'm willing to shift up. The fuel I wasn't too keen on moving around. Now we've got a heat shield at the base of this. And that may or may not be necessary. I think I might have to ditch it just to free the engines so that they can help us out once we're in Mars Sphere of Influence. But I'll try and keep them... i uh, keep the heat shield if possible. We'll see how close we can hit our Mars approach. If it's just adjustable by RCS ports, then that'll be fine. So I guess expecting like 40% 40 40 to 50% boil off on the way to mid-course plane change seems reasonable as far as the delta V. So, um, so reduction in delta V about 40 to 50%. Okay, well the rest should be RCS there. Okay. Let's try and uh, fix that. Okay, enough, uh, enough heavy stage. I'm going to ditch it now. Right. Yep, that's, that's the right parts, right? Okay, off it goes. It's been a good help so far. I'm just pressing once, making sure that uh, this is all good. And I've got a time warp until that. Again, sorry about stopping the turning by going to time warp but uh, I think it's just the glitchiness of the panel it shouldn't be automatically turning like that okay we have staging separation and I'm going back to find controls I extend our other panel after a one minute delay okay so here's our guy and let me see what we need to do to bring our orbit closer into Mars. It's not bad right now, but uh, we definitely want to get in the atmosphere this time. So yeah, this actually has more uh, solar input than this stage, the RL-10 stage was providing. We just couldn't free the panels just yet. Well, that looks pretty good. We'll still have an inclination with respect to the moons. I don't know if I can get rid of all of it. But we're not bad off. And we've got 1,828 meters per second left in this stage. Okay, I'm gonna take off... Uh, well, if I just stop Smart ASS, that'll kill it. But uh, now, no unwanted rotation. And uh, we should be good to go as soon as... Oh, I have to turn towards... Well, before it uh, takes off RCS, let me orient towards the sun. Okay, I, I will want a periapsis of about uh, 50 to 55 kilometers. Probably more like 55. And we're right there. Okay. I'm not going to do anything more here. Let's time warp to Mars SOI. Okay, here we are. And we have some things to correct, clearly, but uh, not bad. Let me target not Bob, but Gilly. And we see a relative inclination of about 10 degrees. 
I'm gonna keep my orientation and just use RCS here. I don't think I need to turn. Let's try and get a better periapsis. Okay, I'm gonna go with uh, 53 kilometers and see if that can aero break us properly. Okay, how about 50? Well, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, now, in my uh, Mars DRM thing, uh, 50 kilometers did it. But I won't mind keeping the orbit a little bit high this time because of the rendezvous necessity, and I definitely don't want to be landing. I'll, I'll take uh, 52.5. Our power situation is excellent. So my initial worries about that uh, have proven unfounded. Uh, the locked battery was superfluous. We can unlock it now. We never got down to that level of electric charge. Okay, around here I want to take care of all the business of getting ready for our approach. So I'm going to retract the solar panels. We've got plenty of battery life. So better safe than sorry here. I'm also going to turn RCS on and then I will have smart ASS I could have uh, the flight computer hold as retrograde okay well I'll turn on fine controls and then have flight computer hold retrograde a rare case where I'm going to allow flight computer to do something Okay, that's it for our solar panels, and we've got four days worth of electric charge. We've got three hours till periapsis. RCS is on, and flight computer hopefully will turn us to retrograde. I've not given it a whole lot of RCS power to work with. Now I want to uh, retract these antennae. Let me first verify that we do have direct connection with Earth, and it looks like we do. Um, it should be Action Group 1. We'll see. Why is, why is this not able to get to retrograde? Everybody tells me to use Flight Computer, and they don't understand why I don't use it. It's basically because of crap like this. I can assure you that uh, Smart ASS will be able to do it. Here. I've added Smart ASS. Well, Smart ASS hasn't been great with uh, fine controls. Maybe I'll give Flight Computer a chance without fine controls. But it's sure going to. I remember Flight Computer uses a whole lot of RCS fuel too. And it's still not going to anywhere close to the retrograde marker. It's just, just spinning around it. The RCS is placed pretty well on this. It's not horrible. But uh doesn't seem like Flight Computer agrees. No, this is this is just it it's it's just not understanding how to get to retrograde. Forget it. Forget it. Yeah, I'll cancel that. I'll have Smart ASS do it separately. Here. I can't select this uh, this commutatron for some reason. Did it get busted by a fairing or something? This is ridiculous. Okay, Smart ASS hold us retrograde. Jeez. Although I think I'll need to wait until that cancels its command before getting any decent results because they're conflicting. But you can already see it's uh, Smart ASS is slowing down the spinning a bit. I think uh, this Commutron 16 is just going to get ripped off. I can't do too much about it if I can't select it. Okay, now, Smart ASS, can you handle this properly or not? Well, you had a little bit of work to get the spin out of it, but uh, yes, Smart ASS got right there, whereas Flight Computer had no clue. 
So yeah, once again, why I don't use Flight Computer. But uh, this is a good time to leave Smart ASS on fine controls, because otherwise it's going to use too much. Yeah, I can't select this antenna, so I guess I guess we're just going to have to let it rip off. Well, actually, while we're here, I can do uh, some experiments. Don't know which ones we haven't done here, but we can observe... Oh, shoot, I shouldn't do that. Yeah, I should dump that, because uh, probably it wants the Mystery Goo to be active for for Deimos anyway. So, yeah, I shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't accept that one. Uh, maybe I should... Well, now it's just... Oh, whatever. What the heck is happening with our heat shield? Oi! That's not right. Um... Um... Oh. Physical time warp. Uh, but um, it's still sort of clipping into the bottom of those thrusters. It wasn't like that, I assure you. Ha. Huh. And no, I didn't use the offset tool on any of the procedural parts. And this is not a procedural heat shield. I'm getting a lot of glitchiness on this particular craft with the with the side fairings, procedural fairings. And now this. I wonder if the antenna is actually going to break. Might not at this altitude. Uh, I think I should probably dampen the ambient light level, yeah. It was looking more like the sun than Mars right there. Okay, we are in orbit. Going to target Deimos again. It'll be nice once I get uh, 1.0 working with clouds uh, to see the actual names of the planets and the moons. Okay, this is looking excellent. Actually, we're within Deimos, so we're actually going to have to boost out to hit it. But this is quite fine. More of a Phobos encounter. 6.9 degrees. Not bad. The Commutron survived. That's a good note for future reference. Should be in space. Excellent. Let me extend the... Well, let me tell it to extend the panels. And then we'll wait for that to actually happen. I'm also going to... Uh, well, I'm going to tell the heat shield to decouple. Again, we won't be needing that again. And after that happens, I want the antennae on our Agena stage to extend. Yes, I know lots of stuff I could have action grouped. Uh, no, reset experiment. Okay, that is a good temperature scan that we haven't done before, so let's transmit that. Okay, and uh, X-ray detection that we haven't done before. Biome dependent. Okay, 500 kilometers and still not counting as an encounter. That's, that's the second moon of Mars for you. 27 kilometers and not an encounter. And you can see uh, a zero second encounter right there. I think you can gather why I had trouble with this the previous time. Yep, encounter escape in the same second. We'll we'll deal with that. Let's let's go for these burns first. Uh, first uh, a 200 meter per second one to correct inclination, a 500 meter per second one to boost out, and then we'll see where we have to go from there. At least it doesn't look like it's too bad. Oh, now we're getting, I think, I think we're getting some planet shininess on this side, yeah. 
There we go, glitchy shield off, and the antennas on the Gina stage extending. Ah, nice color on these. Didn't notice it so much before. Looks nice with the antennae there, which uh, probably would burn off at this point, but uh, yeah, not bad. Okay, here we go, approaching the conclusion of this. I, uh, I'm just going to wait until relative inclination is close to zero. Okay, so here's our current approach to Deimos. And now you see why I accidentally crashed into it, because even though our uh, ghillie encounter, you'll see right here, uh, we have a ghillie encounter, 8 hours, 52 minutes, 1 second, ghillie escape, immediate. Uh, <laughs> we are crashing into the thing. So we're as close as we can get, and yet our encounter is nada. So yeah, that's why I crashed into it last time. I tried this sort of thing. So smart ASS off. <laughs> SAS is probably not the best thing to use. Okay, now the closest approach distance here is probably not very accurate, but I might as well use it. <laughs> uh, because it's better than nothing. So yeah, we're smacking right into it. And there's no way that's going to increase our encounter time. Okay, so I guess we'll plot it. So right around here, I'll add a maneuver to try and match up with Deimos as much as possible. Looks like we're going to have to have some radial component to that. Okay, that looks like the burn we have to do. It actually says Gilly Periapsis 2200 and... Well, that's something. I hope this works. I doubt we'd even be able to see. Oh, wait, that's it. Wow, we can actually see it? That's amazing. And we're going to be flying right by it pretty darn quickly. What speed must an orbit around they must be like? I mean, you know, Gilly. You know, the Kerbal Gilly, the speed is like, you know, a driving pace to get into orbit around it. But it also has these fairly long encounters. Deimos doesn't have any encounter time at all. Okay, it doesn't show my orbit getting in there, but uh, let's use some RCS to nudge it. I sense it wants to. You can see there's a yellow line blinking. Okay, my my little pathetic attempts to fix this aren't uh, getting any better results. So, it's going to be the old uh, pointing towards the target and uh, getting closer, right? So can we do that? Plus target. I'll let you have all the RCS power you want, our uh, smart ASS. Okay, well, every little bit of additional RCS push. Let me go back to fine controls. We've got an encounter again, 12 kilometer periapsis, uh, and that's in a day. So let's go around and we will try that out. Okay, we're getting closer and closer. But our uh, our encounter is going to be very very short still probably. Let's see. It says no, it's actually fairly long. Okay, so now we've got a nice long encounter thanks to the fact that we've very matched speeds with it. So we'll, we'll be in uh, we'll be in Demos sphere of influence for quite a while. And that's not a bad approach to hit this uh, target satellite orbit. 
Here we go. Five hours. Four hours. Three hours. Two hours. Oh, uh, Deimos has a little spike on it, huh? Not, not in real life, I'm sure. I'm sure that's just a missing data point or something. We're not in its sphere of influence yet. <laughs> you know, this is the distance to... to Mars. Okay, now we're in its sphere of influence. Okay, wow. Orbital velocity, 9 meters per second, and we're on escape. Obviously not great textures on Deimos. Can't avoid that. We've only had blurry images of it. No probe has ever landed on the real thing. Okay, we are in orbit. We are in a tight orbit. I'm going to activate SAS. Maybe Smart ASS can kill rotation before SAS can handle it. But uh, here we go. Orbital velocity 1.9 meters per second. Yeah, actually, you could probably, with a brisk walk, get into orbit around Deimos. It doesn't read my mystery goo, though. Oh, well, we were not in the, we're not in the designated thing. Okay. Yeah, we have to get into the designated orbit. That's going to be fun. Achieve orbit around is not happening. Maybe we're still too far up? What does it say here? Oh yeah, we're too far up still. We're still too fast. Um, okay, we've achieved orbit. And now let's transmit some data. It's gotta be worse than Gilly in terms of being a very slow orbit log x-ray data. Log temperature data, and uh, I doubt we can do pressure data. Let's just leave it be. Okay, and while it's uh, getting that sort of thing ready, let me see what I can do to match orbits with our target orbit. This is going to be painfully tough to do. That looks close enough, right? It's going to be that sort of thing. Oh, well, here we go. Okay, let's transmit that. And uh, once that has finished, and it has, we can transmit this. Well, now we are on escape already, but we're going to be changing things around a bit. Well, if you wondered how it could be that um, possibly we wouldn't get this done within the course of this episode. Well, this is the part that was difficult, of course. This is taking a while. Fortunately, the game hasn't crashed yet. Yeah, that looks about right. Looks about right. This isn't reading right. This delta V indication isn't reading right at all. How much do we actually have? Yeah, we don't have very much. This isn't correct. So, uh, just a warning there. But this stage was only meant to get uh, this satellite contract fulfilled, so we're, we're doing well in that case. Okay, well that's a good start. Let's see if they need anything better than that, probably. Oh no, uh, well, oh, yeah, we've done that. No, it hasn't uh, accepted this orbit yet. This is not minimal deviation. Let's see them try and do this, jeez. Just turning around does a lot to our orbit. I get the feeling they're just being petty now. Uh, 
but I'll try. I'll try. Keep trying. Persevere. That is as close as I can humanly get it if we actually do this properly. Oh, we are under time warp restrictions. How wonderful. 48 minutes and we're limited to physical time warp. Okay, well, I'll be back with you once we get there. Just a it's just a shade under 8 kilometers, mind you. But I guess I'll have to wait it out. Okay, I think I've waited long enough and looking at it, it looks like we are probably better off doing it here rather than in three minutes so let me try it out if this doesn't work I don't know what uh, what I can do I also don't know about the GUI experiment thing because it's still not saying I have a GUI experiment I've expanded the details here we're not too far off on longitude of ascending node it's basically going to be periapsis, sapoapsis and inclination inclination uh, we are going to correct now, so I think I need to time warp in the space center, but I'm afraid the game is going to crash if I do anything too much. I can't decouple the lander until this is done because the kick of the decoupling will probably throw us into a weird orbit too. So now that we're so close. Okay, well I'll go to the space center and try and time warp there. Well, here we are in the space center and um the target orbit for our contract seems to be jumping around quite a lot. This doesn't instill me with much hope that we can actually fulfill this thing. Oh, now it's reading the correct delta V it looks like. That's good. Every change I make has uh, different attendant consequences. Oh wait, it liked that. Okay, it likes, likes this orbit. But it doesn't read that I have a mystery goo unit. This is a mystery goo unit. Really? See? Observe mystery goo. It worked before, didn't it? For a contract? Oh, now I'm not in the right orbit. Still doesn't say I have a mystery goo unit, but... Well, what can I do, folks? Um... It's not going to let me satisfy this with this kind of mystery goo unit, I guess. I should have brought one of the more stockish ones. This sucks. Anyway, I'm going to transmit the science. Okay, once again we've reached a designated orbit around Gilly slash Deimos. But once again, it's not recognizing that the mystery goo unit I have here is a mystery goo unit. Well, that's the best I can do. So it is time to get our probe down on the ground at Deimos. Staging in eight minutes. <laughs> there we go. And magnificently, we have not reached escape trajectory. That's good. This is still in communication thanks to the other portion, or maybe it doesn't have communication through any of the other satellites around Mars. Looks like it has a line back to a Martian orbit there, to the Angua M. Okay, but let's handle our lander. Gear down. Oh, well, uh, I guess we do have to toggle it twice. Oh darn, I pressed G three times. Didn't mean to do that. So our signal back to Earth is away from Deimos, so we should maintain communication throughout this landing. Now you might wonder why if I knew that the gravity of this was so low and that our orbital speed would be, you know, walking to running pace, why would I pack so much delta V here? 
well, there's a chance to transfer to Phobos, isn't there? And so if we get a contract to do Phobos, I might have a chance to take care of that. Well, it looks like it'll retract the gears, so I'm applying gear again. Okay, uh, gear is now down, and we're coming down at a blistering 11.8 meters per second. Can slow that down a bit. We don't want to bounce, so we have to come down at a very low velocity. But then we'll have to use our thrusters to keep us down. Killing horizontal velocity with our RCS system. So, Highlands. Who knew? Who knew Deimos had Highlands? How about a thermometer reading suborbital? Ah, well, eight minutes. We'll be on the ground by then. Should have thought of that earlier. Might as well get the Geiger counter one ready too. How's about you get vertical here, buddy? Oh, 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 no, 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 no. Ah. What? What? <sighs> wow, that is the most unexpected failure ever. What, no surface? <laughs> this. Uh, Deimos is suddenly Jupiter, uh, or Jewel for that matter. Ah, oh, that is such a, such a shame. Well, we're gonna fail this contract. I'm not gonna send another mission over here because everything went right except for the practical matter of actually being able to land on Deimos. Uh, it it was a success as far as I'm concerned, but a failure nonetheless. Uh, I, I'm satisfied with the performance of the rocket and the vehicle and communications and the electric charge held out and everything that I could have planned for worked. And then this. So it's been, it's it's a huge disappointment at this point and I've taken a long time on it. But uh, next time we'll try something completely different. Alright, so uh, on this note, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.